Hello everyone, welcome to my class. Today we are going to discuss about the leadership uh, qualities and skills and the teamwork. It is uh, in fact a general concept or general topic and even for commerce students uh, we will learn uh, in the subject called business organization and management also. Uh, actually, I like these leadership qualities and to work in a team works. So that's why I have selected uh, this topic today. And in the first, we will discuss about uh, the few uh, concepts and the few definitions about what is a leadership and what are the qualities that a leader should possess. And later on, we will uh, also discuss about the teamwork. Actually, what is teamwork and how this uh, teamwork can be built in our organizations or institutions etc so first we will discuss about what is a leadership the qualities of a good leader so let me uh, tell you first leader here in management concepts in companies we are very much related to the manager uh, the chief executive officer or the manager is a whole in soul of the company and driving the company, running the company, managing company and looking after all activities which are taking place uh, since the company has established till the winding up of a company. Manager will take a very important part. Here, when, uh, when, uh, when I am teaching business organization management and banking theory and practice, auditing and company law, business law. So here there is a very, I, what I understood is there is a close relationship between leader and uh, manager. So in my present session, we will also see some of the differences between leader and manager. But first, I wanted to uh, tell you about the basic and the common concept for all to build the leadership qualities in everyone. As you know already that leaders are not born, leaders are made. Of course, leaders means the situational leadership it comes. So we have to become a leader. We have to be in a position to lead uh, the other people because when you're confident enough, when you are having the information and the knowledge about what you have to lead others, then happily and dynamically and uh, with the confidence you can go, you can become a leader. There is nothing to hesitate because I like uh, this leadership very much uh, because since uh, I'm studying management when I was a PG student, then, then onwards I had uh, uh, this fascination about this leadership to become a leader, to show the dynamism. And when I was studying about the uh, MBA concepts, when I'm doing my uh, MBA, so I've strongly decided that I have to become a leader once or the other time in my life to lead the people, uh, the organizations or something else. So here I have always attracted towards to the leaders. And uh, with that uh, interest, you know, I have started reading all of us, all of these uh, leaders, the great leaders, in the world like Mahatma Gandhi, Nelson Mandela, Swami Vivekananda, uh, since uh, from the spiritual leaders like Adi Shankaracharya and the uh, uh, economic and the business leaders like uh, then uh, the ruling CEOs like uh, Indra Nui and at present Sundar Pichai and uh, what not. Uh, I have uh, totally covered all the people who led the world in various fields like you know spiritual and economical and you know financial organizations how these people Arundhati Rai and uh, Chanda Kochir all these people are uh, how they how they have started their organizations how they've started leading their company it is always a miracle to me so I used to read about their biographies I used to read about their strategies that how they're implementing in their uh, in their companies in their organizations in the society and all political leaders and all so with that interest you know this is dragging uh, uh, towards to me to become and to show my qualities so what are the qualities that we need to possess uh, to become a leader leader is simple very simple when we see the definition when you stand ahead uh, the few people you know, then you will become a leader but at the same time you need to possess certain qualities. You should not bend down. You should not, uh, you know, fell down. So such kind of qualities also you need to possess. So we will see what are those such kind of qualities that leaders should have. Who are leaders? Leaders, uh, whether they are born, whether they are made, but leader ultimately 
the concept of leadership and the exposure of qualities is shown when you become ultimately a leader so we can say that he is guides others towards common goal showing the way showing the way in the sense where uh, of course you don't know the way you might be not seeing the way how it is going to be but you are giving you are filling the confidence in the people who are coming behind you that i am there if at all anything is wrong that i will face it first then you will automatically set right so this is the dynamism and the dare uh, that leader should have he should guide the people maybe he is experienced before it or now he is also experience all experiencing also he should be a dynamic enough to go and face any kind of challenges and this all these people where you are leading them where you are guiding them where you are directing them is for a common goal common goal is very very important uh, uh, because all the people should achieve for the same thing then only we can accomplish whatever the uh, target that we wanted to reach or the destination we wanted to reach we wanted to uh, get it that can be possible so common goal is very very important here and what is leadership here uh, leadership is ability of a superior to influence the behavior of his subordinates and persuade them to follow a particular course of action this is very very important concept so far i am studying i am observing and i am learning in many areas is so your words and your actions always should match that is very very important a leader can be telling so many stories so many words and so many inspirational concepts but until unless he implement it he uh, involve it the others will not get uh, what you can say the uh, motivation from you so always a, a superior so it is to be influence uh, with your behavior and you should also be in a position to control and change the behaviors of your subordinates also subordinates means a leader basically is for people not for activities not for things for example if you wanted to do an activity if you wanted to run with a machine no machine runs according to its manufacturing its design you cannot change but when you are working with the people no people are a bundle of emotions so you need to control them you even you wanted to extract a work from them no you need to inspire them always with your behavior with your actions not with your only words by reading a book you can inspire at that time but if you wanted to if i wanted to make my subordinate work no putting my book in their hands is not only enough that i have to work along with them so my actions will influence that is very very important and for uh, and to follow them particular course of action is you need to inspire them until they reach or until they complete a task or whatever the course it is been uh, defined to them is to be done so once you have inspired uh, but later on after a few days or after completing the uh, some of the task or the half of the task if the people have got out from your uh, vision you know then that is that is not useful for anybody not only for you as a leader not only for the people who are working under you so this is very very important in the organizations in the society in even in the family is also very very important is your actions always will in, influence uh, your subordinates the society until unless you do of course this is a main difference between a manager and a leader is manager will direct but leader will show uh, the action by doing it uh, in which uh, in which of the way it is possible so this is the main definition that we can consider about the leadership and so yeah yes of course here this is a, a topic that uh, we wanted i wanted to uh, uh, stress you more today's generation uh, i am a degree lecturer since i'm working 15 years in the degree colleges i am been observing that most of the girls and boys today uh, i am very sorry to say this is people are not ready to take the leadership 
I am studying why why the people are uh, going back to become a leader. It is a very good, in fact, a golden opportunity to become a leader because so many things as we cannot learn normally can be learnt when you become a leader. That has done in my case exactly when I have taken up the charge to become a school principal uh, after my marriage which is run by my in-laws. So then I have learned about how to deal with this school, how to deal with the teachers, students and the fourth class employees, how to deal myself, what are the changes I have to make in my behavior, in my words, in my actions, so many things, you know. Not only it is uh, responsible, accountable, but at the same time it gives a very good opportunity uh, to us to learn many things and to elevate yourself because everybody is bagged with, um, what you can say, a bunch of skills. But what is the difficulty is people will not bring it out. People will not bring it out. So my intention is in the students, among the students, to bring bring up to uh, take those uh, qualities inbuilt skills and qualities out that is why in my classes of course i teach the subject uh, that's why basically i have chosen the theory subjects though i got the opportunities to teach business stats and all other subjects because there uh, uh, much scope is not there to interact more with the students. I wanted to interact more with the students. I wanted to know that what the students are feeling about, how they are learning about. Of course, subject I used to teach for 50 percent, rest of the 50 percent of time I used to interact with the students. That what you are feeling, what do you think about all these leaders, all these people, all these activities which are going on in the society. I wanted to know how these students are uh, feeling about moving ahead, standing ahead to become a if i say come on become a leader no they feel that oh it is a very big task very big responsibility i cannot i cannot and the people will go will come up with some excuses that see madam i have this problem i have that problem since so many years i'm observing this of course problems are there but it is giving you an opportunity to to challenge yourself to solve all your uh, problems i i ensure you that definitely when you are developing the leadership qualities in your life no not only your organization but you can manage your life very well this is a uh, hundred percent i can ensure you that always become or try to be a first person so when you become, of course, without any knowledge also, you can become a first person. But then you can try, then you can learn, then you can study about what you wanted to do and where you wanted to go and how you wanted to guide, how you wanted to show the way to the people. Then you can study. So we can take that as a, what you can say, not only a challenge, it is like an opportunity to take up the things and moving ahead and standing ahead above all the people. So this is what I am very much interested in leadership to become a leader and I wanted to make many students as leaders not only leaders uh, when we are working with organization our friends our colleagues also I wanted to uh, I will inspire them always that why don't you take up this uh, task why can't we do of course there are some pros and cons everywhere it is we cannot avoid it even it is our personal matter our family dealings our friendship matters, our institutional matters, our work area, everywhere it will be. We cannot escape. Of course, we know that we cannot escape out of that. Then why can't we face it with our will and wish? Then definitely we can achieve, we can accomplish whatever we wanted to. So this is my very favorite topic is leader to become a leader and to possess the qualities of a leadership. And what is required in leadership is uh, we need to build. When a leader can be happy, is when we when a leader builds a teamwork in his team so the next topic i wanted to move to the next topic of mine in today's uh, session is teamwork so team always working together coordinating with each other cooperating to everyone 
So as we have studied the management principles like uh, Henry Fails, footing principles and Taylor's uh, scientific management and uh, Follett management principles, Weber's management theories, like so many we have studied. Uh, now we are coming out from autocracy, bureaucracy, uh, you know, like a monarchy. So all these terms are becoming old in running your uh, organizations and running your, uh, what you can say, your family even, uh, running the societies also, ruling the nations also. These terms are outdating, feeding out because autocracy, bureaucracy and monarchies will not give the freedom to the people. Not only the freedom, uh, even happiness also. When something you wanted to do with your will and wish is uh, freedom, we can say. But if you like the work, whatever you wanted to do, whatever you are doing gives you the happiness. So a leader, a manager has to build this teamwork in his uh, team, in his work area, in his company. Then what happens is not only the leader, he gives a scope in the uh, work area and in his absence, in the absence of leader, you know, everybody can take up that task because everybody is equally, equal, equally involving in the work and equally or taking the responsibility. Everybody will share the responsibility and uh, will coordinate with, with each other and having the knowledge about each and every uh, task in that which is analyzed and later on which will be synthesized to make it a complete task. With this, uh, all the team members will be equally um, having the knowledge about how to run this system. So this comes, I feel, this comes definitely with the teamwork, individual progress, individual development, which gives a limited development. Nowadays, in 21st century management, in the modern management, and we are living in the global world, when we wanted to achieve, uh, everybody wanted to achieve their task, everybody wanted to accomplish uh, their targets, whatever may be the target whether it is um, possible to you, feasible to you uh, or not, based on your competencies, uh, whether it is you can do it or not, but you wanted to accomplish how it is possible. Because uh, every individual is made up of with certain competencies, uh, capabilities. So beyond that, if you wanted to do is you have to put many efforts and by gaining those efforts, you know, you may, you may lose your time, you may lose your interest. Instead of that, what we do is we join the hands of the people who are meant for different capabilities, different competencies. So with this, what I can do is where I mean, I cannot do the job so that I can do the job with the help of my colleague, with the help of my team. So this is what we have to learn always and never uh, try to become that you are the only one can able to do this task. No. If you are a manager, if you are a leader, you have to give a training in such a way that your juniors also must replace you if it is necessary. So you have to build, you have to train the people. That is possible. I think, I believe strongly in building a very good, strong, efficient team where you are working. So with that, not only building a team, you and your team is not separate. You also have to become a team and you have to work together, then that is a teamwork. Now we will discuss few concepts about this teamwork. As you know, uh, some quotations, I need to take help of some quotations here. There is no I in teamwork. Uh, simply stated, it is less me and more we. Teamwork divides the task and doubles the success. As we can say, uh, coming together is a beginning. Keeping together is a progress. Uh, working together is a success. When everybody wanted to success, you know, uh, who, who does not want to become a uh, uh, who does not succeed tell me everybody wanted to achieve everybody wanted to taste uh, the fruits of success how it is possible 
how it is possible uh, is with the help of teamwork. This is stated by Henry Ford, the famous business uh, person. And when we go for a definition, of course, it's a small definition, um, but uh, this can be defined with uh, many ways. Teamwork is a concept of people working together as a team for one specific purpose under the uh, same value. That is what, when you, are, when you become a leader also, you lead the people for the same purpose to accomplish the common goal. Teamwork is also the same means leaders should have an ability to build a team, a very strong team, which is perfectly fit to accomplish, uh, to reach his goals. That is a definition common for leadership as well as uh, teamwork also. So here the main concept is why we need teamwork. Teams are part of everyone's life. You are a member of a family team. Yes, family is also a team. But where we have a strong blood relations, that's why we never go, uh, go back. We never give up in um, helping to a family members, living uh, with the family members. But in organizations, there is a chance of uh, breaking that bond at any time, as we are not bonded uh, with the blood relations and family relations. Uh, uh, but we need to build such kind of strong bonds where we are working also. Then only it is called as a team. So it's appropriate that you understand how to function effectively as a team member. Of course, when you become, uh, nobody says that when you are in a family, your duties, your responsibilities, you will understand automatically. Because by looking at others, by looking at your mom, you know how to work in the kitchen or how to maintain once if she is working women know how she is managing herself and managing uh, herself in 24 hours of time uh, uh, how she is cooking and how she is getting ready and going and performing her duties outside again coming back and uh, come, you know all this process and when you're a father you observe your father that how he is fulfilling all of the family needs everything uh, in the family so when you're looking at your brother or a sister how they are taking up when your parents are outside, so total responsibility is on your uh, elder brother and elder sisters. So this is what we will learn by looking and observing. And if at all the situation demands, if at all the necessity comes, you, know, you automatically start involving in such kind. You will become a mother, you will become a father, you will become your younger elder sister to your younger brother, uh, or your younger sister. So this is what how we learn in the same manner we have to implement in the organizations also. That is also very, very important. And what happens basically in uh, teams is when we share the responsibility. How is allows team members to feel equally responsible for the performance of the team and its outcome. Responsibility. As if it is a family, you know, we automatically take the responsibility. But in organizations, you know, we have to share the responsibility. Because that is the main thing where when you go to organization, we feel that these are all our uh, uh, outsiders, these are all our other people. But when once if you can, when you consider that your organization is also your family, then you never go back. You never hesitate to take up the responsibility or accountability. So that is what. So to make you uh, involve or to make you feel like a family, organizational heads, so the leaders, the managers, what they're doing is they are building a team and they're giving you or sharing the responsibility equally. With that, what happens is permits individuals to have a primary rules for completing team tasks and remain flexible to do what is necessary to accomplish the team's goals and tasks. So once if you have given the commitment, so we have to uh, abide uh, for that, we have to be bound uh, for that uh, to achieve, in achieving, uh, striving uh, for that work to be accomplished. So this is very, very important. We will, we will become very flexible uh, whenever it is necessary. We have to become uh, flexible uh, whenever it is necessary. If you are going with a rigid and uh, or what you can say strong uh, mentalities, no. Uh, Team can break at any time. And what are the, uh, here I wanted to give you a small guidelines, a few guidelines for effective team membership is listen and share information. A leader, first of all here, one more very interesting and important point What I, where I like much is listen. Always uh, you must be a person to 
listen first understand what the other person is uh, uh, saying and while listening you know uh, collect the information what they have and at the same time uh, when you wanted to tell him yes or no a leader a manager immediately you cannot say yes sir no but then instead of saying yes sir no you try to share the information what do you have about that then automatically people can understand so whether this person is saying yes or no no need to listen uh, from yes or no if if your boss says if your leader says yes he'll be happy if he says no he'll not be instead of that you take you understand it automatically with the information is shared so always always be interested to listen and share the information and what listening really listening to what other team members have to say is one of the most vital skill you can contribute to your productive uh, what you can say or team atmosphere that's what is very very important your subordinates your team members are coming to you with a problem or with the impossibility or impossibility try to listen and give them a assurance that you ensure them that yes i'm here to listen you i'm here to understand your problem so your team members should feel very comfortable to come to you to share their problems to you that kind of atmosphere is very very important it is possible uh, mostly when you treat all the people in your team are equally skilled enough and everybody may not be possess the same skill but they are skilled people so such kind of teams you will build and next thing is you should always be willing to give an uh, attentive uh, what you can say attentive ear to them always to accept uh, to whatever they are saying to you whatever they are expecting from you is very very important views uh, of your team members because when when you are making a team in the sense everybody is worth enough to do the work of course and when they are doing their work they may come come up with new ideas new views innovative ideas to you so then you have to accept it you have to welcome them uh, in giving their views ideologies and innovative methods in doing the work more and more efficiently so this is what the team building is as a as a team leader as a manager as a leader you may not possess the qualities of every aspect you may not possess the skill in doing everything so that's why you are gathering the skill people to complete this task so when they are coming with the new ideas and all you have to welcome them uh, every time this is also a uh, guidelines that we have to follow listen and share the information and keep in touch with them always give a good ear to them to listen and always accept their views and ideas with whatever they are coming with so what we have to uh, keep in our mind very well to build a team in your uh, organizations in your institutions in the societies and what comes out of your teamwork teamwork improves the working environment of course where we are working is very very important building an environment uh, see uh, you will get boredom of your office you get boredom of your house uh, living in the house same house since many years what do you feel uh, uh, yes we need we need to change we wanted to go to kullu manali kerala munnar or uh, rajasthan or uti or at least in spiritual like pilgrimages and all or else nature scenic beauty why because that environment when you change the environment or when you go to a, a, what do you think about kullu manali himalayas and jammu and kashmir and all these will be as a nature you know nature uh, gives you the energy you feel very pleasant you feel very happy to enjoy that's what you need to create in your work environment also your environment your working environment should be very very pleasant every day you should feel very happy to go to the company to work with my uh, your colleagues your staff your subordinates even the fourth class employee also you wanted to see them you wanted to meet them you wanted to talk to them this is what 
kind of zeal we need to develop always in our work environment. Every day going to the company, ah, same company, same boss, same people, going, saying good morning and sitting in our chair and doing the same work, monotonous work. No, you have to create a team, a uh, very uh, good team which gives you a pleasant environment to go, uh, like a festive environment you should create. That's possible with the help of a proper and strong team. And teamwork keeps communication consistent. Consistent in the sense, we have studied that, uh, uh, like, you know, scalar chain in um, Henry Fair 14 principles, he says about, he introduces about scalar chain. Means communication has to go, or uh, it should uh, it should travel in upward direction as well as in the downward direction. So it may take some time and sometimes, you know, uh, the delayed communication leads to some adversities and some uh, miscommunication problems also it leads to some sometimes even it may give the loss to the company also to avoid such kind of things no uh, your team everybody is being given equal importance to share the information consistently from anywhere to anywhere any part to any part like uh, without having in a proper hierarchy of course in some teams we can build any administrative concern of course we need to have a hierarchy and teamwork relieves stress Yes, nowadays most of the people are uh, dealing with stress and there are so many lectures, stress management, time management. Uh, I wanted to clarify that stress cannot be managed, time cannot be managed. We are the people have to be managed with the time and with the stress because they are, uh, they are external things. Stress in the sense it is coming from your body. It's coming from your body. So the origin is in your body. So what is to be managed? Not the stress to be managed. Your body has to be managed not to get stress. And time, time is not in your hands. Of course, it is not in your hands. It will not come into your hands also. It's ticking, ticking away in the sense it's going, going away. You cannot get it back, not even a fraction of a second back. And even you cannot define uh, the second which is going to come for you in the future. So what? Time cannot be managed. You as a person have to manage with the time. How it is ticking in the same manner. You also work accordingly with your proper, strong, perfect plans. That I believe. So time cannot be managed. Stress also cannot be managed. Stress has to be removed, relieved, released from your body. Uh, one of the ways is working always with teams. And teamwork reduces errors. Of course, it is very, very important in the managements and the organizations is errors. Of course, errors to whom we have a, a common saying, errors to whom um, human beings will, will do some, will commit some errors knowingly, unknowingly, intentionally, unintentionally, suddenly, uh, gradually, eventually. There, there are so many ways that committing in errors. So, but uh, ultimately, how I have to complete my task is without errors, error free. Error fee is very, very important. Even if you get errors also, happily, uh, happily in a very easy manner, you should be able to remove those errors. That also possible, I feel, with the help of teamwork. And teamwork keeps communication lines open. Yes, this is what the scalar chain has defined in a Henry Fell 15 principles is communication is very, very important because there are so many things which uh, takes adverse uh, uh, form or shape of not communicating it in time. In time, it is very, very important. So reaching the information to the right person in the right time is very, very important. So we need to build certain lines to pass uh, the communication, whichever is necessary, helpful and useful only, not uh, any other kind of uh, communication. Anyway, we have informal communication system also in the organizations like great pain communications. We have studied about uh, such kind of communication patterns in the systems and organizations which flows which are already built but with the help of teamwork what happens is as all the people are sharing equal responsibility as all the people will take accountability so passing information from any line from any person is possible with that what happens is we can overcome and even we can avoid uh, the very dangers or the problems or the risks that going to come uh, in my system. So this is all about the teamwork uh, and the leadership. Now I would like to uh, uh, show you uh, some videos and the, uh, about the teamwork as well as uh, the leadership qualities.
uh, with the help of some videos so uh, let me give some time to set my videos yes so here i wanted to uh, show you the qualities of a leader how a leader can be uh, with the help of these uh, some videos okay so yes uh, eagle so mentality of eagle when you study the mentality of an eagle no we can learn certain things here are the seven points don't be a parrot in life a parrot talks way too much but can't fly high but an eagle is silent and has the will power to touch the sky so here we will learn some tips from eagle uh, here are the seven uh, mentality tips eagle mentalities that we can learn from uh, an eagle first one eagle flies alone at high altitudes heights uh, this can be done uh, well, eagles don't fly with uh, sparrows ravens and other small birds it flies alone stay away from narrow minded people always those that bring you down eagles fly with eagle only better to be alone uh, there is a saying that goes like this people you hang out around will eventually determine the person you become keep always a good company it's very very important number 2 eagles have vision and they have the ability to focus on something as far as 5 kilometers away no matter what the obstacles the eagle will not move his focus from the prey until he grabs it have a vision always and remain focused in your life no matter what the obstacles and challenges you may face but don't give up and you will succeed definitely and here number 3 third a mentality tip from eagle is eagles are fearless of course uh, an eagle will never surrender to the size or strength of its prey it will always give a fight to win its prey or regain its territory no matter what the size or the big your problems are but don't give up in face it successful people are fearless always they face problems head on this is very important next one is eagles are tenacious here uh, we can learn this is eagles love storm dynamic when clouds gather eagles get excited eagles use the storm when to life itself higher once it finds the wind of the storm the eagles use the aging thing lift itself above the clouds so this give the eagle an opportunity to glide and rest its wings in the sky and hide in the branches and leaves of the tree achievers are not afraid of challenges rather they relish them and use them profitability so very important thing we can learn from eagle and next one is eagles never eat dead things uh, means uh, uh, eagles never eats dead meat in other words an eagle does not scavenge Uh, it only eats the meat from the prey it kills itself that's very important do not rely on your past success uh, keep looking for new frontiers to conquer leave your past where it belongs in the past uh, also very important feature we can learn from eagle the next one is eagles prepare for training uh, you know they remove the feather and the soft grass in the nest so that the young men get comfortable in preparation for flying and eventually they fly when it becomes too unbearable to stay in the nest uh, leave your comfort zone always there is no growth there uh, last but not the least the seventh one is eagles possess vitality uh, regeneration uh, when the eagle grows old his feathers become weak and cannot take him as fast and as high as this makes him weak and could make him die so so he retires to a place far away in the mountains and while there he plucks out the weak feathers on his body and breaks its beaks and his claws again against the rock until it is completely bare Uh, a very bloody and painful process then he stays in his hiding place groom new feathers 
and new beaks and claws then and then comes out flying higher than ever before so this is what we have to learn from eagle we occasionally need to shed off old habits no matter how difficult they are things that burden us or add no value to our lives should be let go off so in this way we can learn uh, these tips from uh, uh, eagles you know uh, this is what uh, we have to learn see all other animals birds everything is teaching us if you are ready to learn from that definitely even we can learn from butterfly we can learn from an eagle we can learn from a ant we can learn from a caterpillar we can learn from a you know all of the kind of animals particularly eagle and lion shows the leadership qualities that's why i have selected uh, this one and next one i would like to play another video uh, which continues this sorry okay, let me set another thing we will learn from so okay here also two things where we can learn one is eagle another is lion so let me tell about the lion and i identify those two animals as his favorite to identify himself with even god is also made two leaders for us i recognize i better study these two animals because if he is a leader of the universe and i wanted to be a leader on the earth i better find out the nature of these animals and also the attitude of these animals and i discover that both of them are kings of their domain like eagle is a eagle is a king for its a bird kingdom and the lion is a king for its animal kingdom that's a two are leaders so but let's talk about this the lion has what i call is spirit of leadership and this word spirit here is referring to an attitude everybody is attitude a leader has attitude that makes him or her different from other people like followers and uh, you know now the lion is the king of the jungle uh so but the lion to me is a great source of encouragement all of us i want you to write down this number 1 the lion is not the tallest animal in the jungle number 2 the lion is not the largest animal in the jungle and the lion is not the heaviest animal also in the jungle so number 4 the lion is not the smartest animal in the jungle and the most intelligent animal also in the jungle and yet when he shows up they all run away this is what attitude where he is my own one favorite quote that i put in his books are believe that really brings him home point is the very important point here it is an army of sheep led by a lion will always defeat an army of lions led by a sheep and the answer to that dilemma is this because leadership can transform cowards into violent warriors and the right king of leadership can transform a timid into bold people who are fearless leadership is that powerful transformation is very very important leadership can walk into camp of depressed people and in 20 minutes they have turned into unbelievable powerful armies because leadership determines everything uh, when you consider the lion is the king of the jungle because of one word its attitude its attitude everybody say attitude write it down attitude the lion has a different attitude that makes every animal afraid of him yes now we don't want led by fear uh but it just take respect for you to become a leader your pain can be converted and i use the word fear in the jungle we are talking about so many things elephant respects the lion uh, giraffe the hyenas respect the lion giraffe respects the lion all other animals uh, what makes these massive animals respect such small cat small cat big cat uh so the attitude is the difference with which you come up for example a lion will see an elephant and the thing that comes of his mind one word is it's a lunch 
we can have a very big animal for lunch. I could eat this thing. Uh, and he acts the way he thinks. Now, here's another amazing mystery. Elephant is larger, bigger, stronger, more powerful, heavier, more intelligent. But even, even then, uh, and yet when the elephant sees the lion, one word comes to mind, Eta. Yes, it is going to eat them. Attitude is a product of belief. You cannot have an attitude beyond your belief. So, your attitudes come from your belief system. So, you need to build a strong belief system. That you are stronger. The lion is the king because of what believes about himself. So, this is what uh, my... Uh, what you can see the next uh, video uh, about uh, showing the leadership qualities from eagle and lion so you have we have to build this kind of attitude in ourselves whatever we are whether we are from you know uh, famous backgrounds economical backgrounds this is not at all matter but you know from where we are coming out of all this is very very important now let me show another thing about the teamwork here we will study about uh, how to build a team yes let me start from the beginning yes mm, yes turtle and rabbit uh, yes uh, before starting this before showing this video you all know the story since your childhood that turtle and rabbit goes for a race and where rabbit takes some rest but turtle will not and consistently it runs and it wins the race. So the moral of the story is slow and steady wins the race. Of course this is the same story that I am going to show you but in a different concept. So you can enjoy, I feel it can be enjoyed. So once upon a time a turtle and a rabbit uh, had an argument about who was faster. They decided to settle the argument with race. The turtle and rabbit both agreed on a route and started off the race. So the rabbit shot ahead and ran briskly for some time. Seeing that he was far ahead of the turtle, then he thought he would be under a tree for some time and relax before continuing the race. He sat under the tree and soon fell asleep. The turtle plotting on overlooking him and soon finished the race emerging as undisputed champ the rabbit woke up and realized that he had lost the race so the moral of the story is that slow and steady wins the race yes you know all this is a version of the story that we all grown up with but our version of the story is continuous what it is is the rabbit was disappointed losing the race and it's some thinking uh, here it got an idea. He realized that he would be lose the race only because he had been con overconfident, careless and lax. If he had not taken things for granted, there is no way the turtle could have beaten him. So he challenged the turtle to another race. The turtle agreed. So another race. It's a, so challenge the turtle to another race now. Go. This time the rabbit went all about and ran without stopping from start to finish. He won by several miles. The moral of the story, fast and consistent will always beat the slow and steady. It's good to be slow and steady, but it's better to be fast and reliable. So, but the story doesn't end here. The turtle did something this time and realized that there is no way that he can beat rabbit in race. That way it was currently formatted. He thought for a while and then challenged the rabbit to another race, but on a slightly different road. The rabbit agreed. The turtle and rabbit started off for third race. Okay. In keeping with the self-made commitment to be consistently fast, the rabbit took off and ran at top speed and until he came to Broad River. The finishing line was a couple of kilometers on the other side of the river. So the rabbit sat there wondering what to do. In the meantime, the turtle trundled along, got into the river, swam to the opposite bank, continued walking and finished the race. 
the moral of the story is first identify your core competency and then change the playing field to suit your core competency the story still hasn't ended the turtle and rabbit by this time had become pretty good friends and they did some thinking together both realized that the last race could have been run much faster so the turtle and rabbit decided to the last race again but to run as a team this time they started off and this time the rabbit carried the turtle till the river bank and there the turtle took over and swam across the rabbit on his back on the opposite bank the rabbit again carried the turtle and they reached the finishing line together both the turtle and the rabbit felt a greater sense of satisfaction than they felt earlier the moral of the story is it's good to be individually brilliant and to have a strong core competencies but unless you are able to work in a team and harness each other's core competencies you'll always perform below par because there will always be a situation in which you'll do poorly do someone else does well teamwork is mainly about situational leadership letting the persons with the relevant core competency for a situation take leadership so this is ultimately i wanted to tell you all is we have to work with the team we can achieve so many impossible things with the help of a team and by having a very good leadership so uh, i i feel that i have reached uh, my point and i have made you to understand the importance of leader leadership teamwork there i have take little help of these videos also thanks uh, for watching my lecture and i hope that you can get some points out of my lecture thank you all and i am ending here